So right. um, we're gonna um, go to our new section. Uh, starting with, we're gonna start with comics actually. So Speed Metal. Speed Metal is a story that takes place within Dark Knight's uh, Death Metal, which that's DC a, Universe. In case you don't know, um, that's a whole other conversation that we're gonna have that I already have planned out. But basically, the Dark Knight's Metal. Both. DC becoming the Dark Knight verse in general, but okay. Um, basically, um, this story um, focuses on the Flash family. Basically, it's um, it starts off with Barry, um, Wally, the original Wally West. Because for people who don't know, there are two Wally West. There's a black one and there's a white one. Um, I like both of them. I like both of them as well. I prefer the original one, but I same. I, I um, and Jay Garrick who's the very first Flash. Um, they're running from the Batman Who Laughs, who a lot of you probably have no idea who I'm talking about. Uh, who's basically the Better Batman. that you don't. The Batman, Batman Who Laughs sucks. Batman F. He was the Joker. <laughs> it's literally a Batman and Joker fuse. Um, I'm not going to get into how that happened because that's too much. But it's basically he's, he's become so... He's basically become reality-altering powerful. And he's chasing after Wally West so that he could take the powers that Wally has because Wally has also become reality altering powerful. Like he, they both have basically become as powerful as Doctor Manhattan, plus the abilities they already had. So actually, Wally does have uh, Doctor Manhattan's powers. Yeah, I know that's, that's why he's that powerful. Yeah. yeah, they both they both have a portion of Doctor Manhattan's powers. Um, so he's ch he's chasing him so that he could take the powers from Wally. And become even more powerful, so that he could stop that lady. I forget her name. Um, <clears throat> and basically, what I want to talk about is that story. Is that I I feel like they overexplain the Speed Force. <laughs> okay. um, not overexplain. They go too deep into it for the average viewer, the people who aren't that into comics but are are somewhat interested. They would be confused if they haven't been reading comics their whole life. <laughs> like just. Okay. Jumping into a comic nowadays, I feel like, is a little bit harder because there's so much information <laughs> that you have to catch okay. up in terms of how the Speed Force works. It's basic. It's in reality, it's basic in how it works. Very. But the more you the more you talk about it, the more confusing it gets. When essentially it is literally just they can run fast and <laughs> they have access to. Uh, a dimension that has a bunch of energy that they siphon from to make them run fast. And on top of being able to run fast, they can also create things out of the speed force, like materialize things like clothes, like Wildly, for example, makes his uniform out of the speed force. And also there's a lot of other um, powers that you wouldn't expect them to have because, you know, when you think of the flash, you think they can just run, but they can do way more than that because the speed force is a little bit more, not a little bit, a lot more <laughs> than just super speed. But right. that's all I want to say. It's just sometimes, I, think, I don't think that the speed force is the biggest offender. I think that of all of the things that get over-explained in comics, the speed force is the least of your words. Like 100%, the speed force in reality is very simple. I just wanted to use that as an example because it is um, a, a recent comic that is, um, that's come out focusing on those characters. Very recent. And also, Wiley's probably... He's, he's not probably, he's definitely my second favorite DC superhero after Batman. And um, there are some things that just, I hate when people over explain things. I'm not sure if I've talked about this on the podcast before, but um, sometimes I feel like the origin of, um, the origin of something doesn't always need to be explained. Like for example, in the Legend of Korra, <laughs> when they explain um, the origin of the first Avatar, there are certain aspects of it. I don't want to, I don't 100% well, first off, I don't really hate those episodes. Those episodes are fantastic. They're easily the best two Those episodes. are the best parts of season two, in my opinion. Those are the best two episodes of that entire season. But one, they completely... After that episode, they completely kind of switch the direction that Korra's character was going. That completely tanks every piece of character development that was happening. <laughs> and that's one reason why um, season two of Korra isn't very good. Also, I feel like it kind of... It retcons a few things about um, the Avatar universe, as well as um, makes, um, uh, what are they called? 
spirits. They make the spirits um, out to be these things that could easily be manipulated by others, by these two other big, bad, godlike spirits, which I'm not a fan of. Sometimes I think right. that keeping things a mystery works better than explaining it. Um, uh, if you have, you have anything to say about that? Uh, I, my example has nothing to do with, uh, Legend of Korra. It has to do with Nightwing, actually, because recently, I don't know how recent, or at least I don't remember how recently, but recently enough, I've been reading Nightwing's, uh, 1996 series, and I got confused about what series it was, so I was actually reading the 1995 series at first, like, in the very beginning, but, um... In his 1995 series, they do some ridiculously stupid stuff where they basically retcon Nightwing's care or Nightwing's origin into like the man in the iron mask. Like the guy who murdered his family worked was like a hitman for this country that wanted his family dead or something like that for some stupid reason. And so Nightwing like goes and sneaks into this like country where this guy's like king and learns like this whole secret plot about like this guy or about like the king that had like a secret son but like the son was like super evil so he'd like kid or he'd, like either kidnapped the son or killed the son and replaced him with a figurehead that like had plastic surgery to look like his son was even more of a, like an evil fascist dude than his actual son and it was, i don't even remember what it was because it was quite a few months ago that i read it but it was so dumb as opposed to just the mob the circus owed the mob money. The mob came after the circus and killed, uh, Dick Grayson's parents got caught in the crossfire. Like, that's all it needs to be. It did not need to be like. Well, no, I'm sorry. Were you finished? Oh, no, well, kind of. I'm mean, like, all I'm saying is like, it does not need to involve like a country and a king and like right. a plot to overthrow the government. Like, just kill a lot. His parents are dead and they died because of the mob. Sometimes less is more. And sometimes um, when they try to explain the origin of something, they kind of add in a bunch of details that didn't, that just kind of muddle things. Um, I feel like a big example, this isn't something that actually happened, but um, if it did happen, I feel like would be an example of them ruining the mystery and making things weird as F. They explained the origin of the Force in Star Wars and like somehow, one, even thinking about it and trying to figure out how they could do it, I'm thinking, like how? <laughs> mm. Why would they? It would make no sense. For them to explain the origin of the force would be ridiculous. It would be much like how people believe in God today. We don't know how, if, um, for people who do believe in God, you don't know how he came about. You don't. You just know that he's there. That's what the force is supposed to be. The force is supposed to be mm. like God. The force is supposed to just be everything and everywhere at all times. You know? The force is literally their version of, like, the Star Wars universe version of God, of, like, Christianity. <laughs> um, right. And that's all it's supposed to be. You don't want to over-explain that. You don't want to say, like, once upon a time, there was this dude. He, his name is the one above all. Above all. He, <laughs> he, um, one day, started giving his energy out to random people across the world. <laughs> and those people are Force users. That would ruin a lot. So imagine if they introduced a God was the person that gave everyone their force abilities and people who became force sensitive were people chosen by that god would you like that Amir? <laughs> no i mean i like the explanation of the ones i feel like for people that don't know star wars it's not that's not the actual explanation of like the force and stuff like that but i, I, think I, was say, I like the explanation of the ones that they have like the force gods that they do i like that explanation but uh no that that would be the force, the force gods that they do have they aren't like the they aren't really like the gods of the force they were created yeah. by the force right they're physical embodiments of each aspect by the force not that right. not that they literally are the force <laughs> but yeah that's basically my little rant about over explaining the origins of literally anything especially when it comes to um like the overarching power base like um the avatar and um legend of Korra or the force in Star Wars, which, like I said, they haven't over explained the force. The force, at, like, they're we're going to talk about this because we plan on having a dedicated Star Wars episode, but um, which we were just talking about before this, yeah. Um, but basically, um, 
they, of all the mistakes that they have made in the Star Wars universe, one they haven't done yet, which I, I'm sure they probably never will, because they aren't, they aren't stupid enough to do it, is over explain the origin of the Force. Or even try to explain yeah. the Force, which is something that doesn't need to be explained. 